Hello and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains, and this week we're doing a Nike third quarter earnings preview because the company is set to report its Q3 fiscal 2019 financial results this week. So we're going to look at what to expect from North American sales, sales in China, footwear, and much more. But before we do that, I want to say, remember, if you have any questions or episode suggestions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com. So Nike stock, NKE, opened at $87.22 per share Monday morning, which is just below its 52-week and all-time high of just under $88 a share. Nike is scheduled to report its third quarter financial results after the closing bell on Thursday, March 21st. So this Thursday, which is the same day as the NCAA tournament starts, which means the company will be on full display for the next month as most people are filling out their brackets in anticipation of what is one one of the biggest sports gambling months of the year as well. So as I mentioned, some of its biggest brands in college basketball from Duke to UNC will be on display and in fact Nike has four of the number one seeds so all four of the number one seeds in the tournament are sponsored by Nike that's Duke, Virginia, Gonzaga and North Carolina with North Carolina being sponsored by Nike's Jordan brand because of the Michael Jordan connection to UNC. And what's interesting is that a few weeks ago one of the big negative stories surrounding Nike which really had no effect on the company at all, but it's news stories galore. When one of Duke's stars, which is Zion Williamson, who's maybe the biggest college basketball star in the last decade, got hurt on national TV, literally busting through the side of his Nike shoes, hurt his knee. Then there was two weeks of speculation if he was going to play. All the talking heads on sports media saying, don't play, do what's right for you, sit out the rest of the season so you can get drafted. Number one, he came back this past weekend and Duke won the ACC tournament. He was the star of the show. And Nike is now definitely going to sign him to a major sponsorship deal. And he's, unless some dramatic injury happens, he's for sure going to be the number one pick in the NBA draft. So all's looking good on Nike's front after what was kind of a bad story for the last two weeks with Zion getting hurt. Uh, And all this is to say is that Nike has really remained at the highest level of sports. This is not just college basketball, but it's NBA, the NFL, soon Major League Baseball, as well as international soccer and sportswear and fashion. It's penetrated to kind of the mainstream fashion and even high fashion in some senses and the athleisure market which is now almost on a a five-year run and it doesn't really look like it's going to stop anytime soon and this has seen the likes of Lululemon and other companies kind of really expand their footprint in the U.S. and North America and in Europe and slowly in China. And the company's ability to really remain a part of these iconic brands like Duke and UNC is highly important and a big part of the reason why Nike is what it is today. And now it's even more important in the internet age where they're sponsoring and their logos on people's feet and draped across their chest. And it pretty much lives out there forever. And this is also why this is something I've talked about on the show before. And there's companies that do research and just show how important social media reach is in this day and age in advertising. Because you basically get all of this free exposure with retweets and all of these videos living on YouTube forever and Instagram. Where it's just, as I said, free advertising for now, basically forever. So just for reference how big Nike is in terms of their social media reach. They destroy rivals Adidas and Under Armour on Twitter, and then Instagram, which is more of a photo and video sharing app, which is becoming hugely popular. It's owned by Facebook, helping uh, Facebook grow even more. That sees Nike at 85 million followers just on their main page. And Adidas, which is a huge, huge global company, is only at 23.3. So 86 to 23, that kind of just shows the big gap there between just how big of a brand Nike is on the international stage. And then you have Under Armour taking out a distant third at 7 million. All this is to say is that the Oregon headquartered firm has rolled out also multiple shopping focus apps including apps that exclusively sell their sneakers. In this mobile commerce market, 
is gonna become even more important than it already is. Last quarter, Nike's digital revenues surged 41% with mobile accounting for over 50% of its digital revenue. And looking ahead, Nike's chief financial officer, Andy Champion, expects its digital division to make up about 30% of Nike's total business by 2023, which is compared to roughly 15% last quarter, so doubling in the next four years. Unfortunately, at this point, Nike does not officially break down these figures in terms of actual revenue, so we don't have any real e-commerce or digital estimates to look at at this point, but we do have estimates for a bulk of their Nike's other key divisions, so we'll, we can talk speculatively kind of after the fact on exactly how big Nike's digital business is, but even though they're trying to expand their direct consumer business and they've really made this push in the Amazon era where every company is trying to build up their direct consumer sales, they've also remained focused on wholesale business but in a more measured approach. So CEO Mark Parker has remained committed to a strategic wholesale business which includes working with Nordstrom's, Dick's Sporting Goods, and Foot Locker. And in fact, just a few weeks ago, Foot Locker management credited Nike products for helping the retailer crush its guidance for their holiday quarter sales. And a company Foot Locker just invested in, which is Goat, which is a secondary shoe market company, Nike also helps support that business. So Nike really is kind of one of the linchpins of the entire sports retail world. And so heading into earnings this week, Nike is currently a Zach's rank number two buy, and it sports a B grade for growth in our style score system. And this comes a lot from some positive earnings estimate revision trends for both this quarter, this year, as well as next. But now I wanna get into some key company estimate and some overall top and bottom line estimates going into the quarter. So first up, we're going to look at footwear sales because footwear sales account for just over 60% of total revenues every quarter for Nike. So it's a, it's a huge, huge part of their business, very important. So based on our non-financial estimates, Nike's footwear sales are projected to jump 6.6% this quarter to reach 5.97 billion. So some solid growth. This would come on top of the year ago period's 5% growth, but it would come up short of last quarter's 11% climb. So a little bit of a slowdown compared to Q2's 11% climb in terms of footwear sales. And then meanwhile, North American revenue is projected to climb over 8% from 3.57 billion in the year ago period to 3.87 billion. And this is once again, based on our non-financial estimates. We should note that this 8% growth is compared against a third quarter of 2018 that saw Nike's North American sales actually slip 6%. So it's an easy comparable quarter here in terms of year over year estimates. And then Nike's North American business, as I mentioned at top, is a huge part of their business and it's a really great thing for the company and investors that they've been able to return to growth in this North American market, which accounts for about 40% of total revenues. So we're, we're, we're calling for 8% growth for North America, which would come up just short of last quarter's 9% growth, but come on top of the first quarter's 6% growth for North America and up way bigger than Q4 of 2018 when North American sales were up just 3%. And another one of the big things that Wall Street investors will be paying attention to, especially as the Chinese economy slows, is the, their sales in greater China because that business now accounts for roughly 15 to 20% of revenue every quarter, every quarter depending on the quarter. So our estimates are calling for Nike's revenues in greater China to surge 15% to 1.54 billion, and this would mark the 19th consecutive quarter of double-digit revenue growth in China and come on top of the year-ago period's 19% growth. So some, some good estimates there for greater China. It would mark a bit of a slowdown from last quarter when Nike's revenues in the region climbed 26%, so they might be seeing a little bit of an impact from the slowing Chinese economy that has hurt the likes of Apple, Alibaba, and you name hundreds of other companies that do business in the world's second largest economy. But clearly, there's still some good 
good top line revenue estimates for Nike, maybe a little bit of a slowdown in some of their key metrics compared to some recent quarters, but overall solid growth there. And then in terms of overall third quarter fiscal 2019 revenue growth, it's projected to jump 5.7% to reach 9.5 billion. And this is based on our current Zach's consensus estimate. So this could always change even until the day before Nike reports this Thursday. It would mark a slowdown from last quarter, which saw Nike's revenues jump 10% and it would come on top of the year ago period 7% revenue growth. So some solid year over year growth, especially against a quarter that saw the company's overall revenues jump 7%. So once again, uh, some strong growth. And then on the bottom end of the income statement, Nike's third quarter earnings don't look that great. In fact, it's adjusted Q3 earnings are projected to dip nearly 9% to 62 cents per share, which is never a great sign, but despite that, Overall, their 2019 earnings are expected to be up 8.6%. On top of that, looking ahead to fiscal 2020, their earnings are expected to jump for the full year, 18% above our current year estimate. So long-term, Nike's bottom line is expected to continue to grow, but we're looking at what looks to be a little bit of a setback from Nike in this upcoming quarter. And then in terms of Fiscal 2019 and 2020 revenues. This year, overall revenues are expected to jump 7.5%, and then 2020 would see Nike come in 8% above our current year estimate. So in terms of that growth, as I mentioned, some solid top line growth this quarter, a little bit of a downturn on the bottom line, but overall for the full year in 2020, Nike looks like it's gonna see some strong overall adjusted earnings growth and then some solid top line growth as well. But I wanna get into some more fundamentals ahead of the company's earnings release this Thursday because it kind of puts into context what's going on at the company and gives investors a sense of what they wanna do with Nike stock at the moment. So we should also note that inventory is pretty low right now, which is good for Nike. It means they won't have to discount as much. And we should also note that Nike's biggest rival, Adidas, recently lowered its 2019 outlook. So last Wednesday, Adidas said that its net sales would grow this year by roughly 5 to 8%, which is way below 2017 when they came in at 16% top line growth and then even lower than 2018 when they posted 8% top line growth. And then in terms of kind of specifics of what's going on here, Adidas chief executive Casper Roystead partly blamed some of the slowdown that's expected this year with some supply chain problems, especially in the US. And then more specifically, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown on its what had been a huge driver of growth in recent years, that's Adidas retro business. So it's Stan Smith and Superstar sneakers we're in decline this past year after some really great growth in the last couple of years. So that's something to pay attention to in terms of overall market share. And then the company's push into lifestyle products in recent years has left its top line kind of exposed as fashion is a quickly changing thing as lots of people will know in terms of just the business can be very fickle at times. So that's something to continue to pay attention to with Adidas as part of this bigger overall sports retail market on a global level. And then in terms of Nike in general, Nike stock is up almost 18% so far in 2019. This edges out Lululemon, which is up just around that same amount. And then this also comes on top of the S&P 500, which is up 13%, and Adidas, which is also up 13% as well. And then in terms of a five-year context of where Nike stock is, Nike stock is up 120% over the last five years, which tops Adidas, blows away the S&P 500's 56% climb, crushes Under Armour, which is actually down 30% over the last five years. And then in terms of these well-known sportswear companies. Uh, Lululemon has actually been by far the best performer over the last five year stretch with its stock up 184% with a lot of that growth coming in the last three years or so as this athleisure market that it, Nike's really successfully jumped into has grown. And then in terms of how Nike's valuation looks right now, it's currently trading at 29 times forward earning estimates, which comes in way above the S&P 500, 16.7, and its industry's 20.2. But 
it's not terrible in terms of its larger context. It's, it is trading above its five-year median, which is 24.6 times forward earnings. But its valuation picture is hardly what we'd call stretched. It's kind of trading around where it's been in the last five years, especially in terms of how the stock itself has performed. We should also note that Nike is a dividend payer that last announced a 22 cents per share dividend, which will be payable on April 1st. And then once again, as we mentioned at the top, Nike stock opened near, right near its all-time high. So right below its all-time high as of recording this. So it could be up by the time you're listening to it. And as we mentioned, Nike is scheduled to report its third quarter fiscal 2019 financial results after the closing bell this Thursday, March 21st. So make sure to come back to Zach's for a full breakdown of their actual metrics at that point. And then we'll get into some of Nike's digital business as they'll really get into all of that on the earnings call. And then we'll get into a lot more of what to expect from Nike's future after they report what their actual third quarter metrics are and then kind of look out to see what to expect from the fourth quarter. And then a new revision for what the full year 2019 and maybe 2020 will be for that sportswear giant. So that does it for another episode of Full Court Finance. Until next time, I'm your host, Ben Rains. And remember, if you have any questions or episode suggestions, please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com.